As we've already heard this week, epithelium plays a role in lining different parts of the body. For the epithelial cells that make up your skin, this means keeping the contents of your body on the inside and separated from the rest of the world on the outside. So separating the inside of your body from the outside of your body or separating one different environment from another different environment is a very important function of an epithelial cell, but it can't do it alone. To form an effective barrier, lots of epithelial cells need to form a barricade with no gaps between the cells. Cell junctions are found between adjacent epithelial cells and like the name suggests, make sure that these cells are tightly adhered to one another. There are three main types of cell junctions that we're going to be talking about today. Tight junctions, as the name suggests, which firmly adhere adjacent cells to one another. Desmosomes, which further strengthen these tight junctions and are resistant to stretching and twisting. And gap junctions, or these are junctions which are called communication junctions, allowing adjacent cells to talk to one another. Now, just like its name suggests, tight junctions tightly connect adjacent epithelial cells to each other. This is achieved by fusing the plasma lemma of adjacent epithelial cells, which form an impenetrable barrier. The function of tight junctions is to form a seal that prevents molecules from passing between the two cells. That way, anything on the luminal side has to pass through the cell rather than between the cell. The epithelial cell also acts as a security guard, choosing what passes from the luminal side into the body or what passes from one side to the other. Tight junctions can be found in the epithelium that lines your intestine. As you can see in this diagram, when there are tight junctions present, bacteria are unable to pass between the cells and enter the body. If we didn't have these tight junctions, then the cells would not be tightly held together and the bacteria would easily be able to pass between them and enter the body. Desmosomes are the second type of cell junction and these function to firmly adhere and strengthen the bond between cells. Desmosomes strengthen the connections of adjacent cells. They are found just under or next to tight junctions and are formed by proteins that interlock and connect the cells. So if my hand represents a tight junction, desmosomes are like my interlocking fingers which firmly keep the junction together and are resistant against stretching and twisting. Desmosomes are found between epithelial cells that need to withstand physical stress, such as the skin. So if I scratch or rub my skin, it's the desmosomes that are holding these adjacent cells together that prevent them from falling apart. Gap junctions are the third type of junction we're going to talk about today. These are found between adjacent cells and allow these cells to communicate effectively with one another. Proteins called connexins form small channels that allow ions and small molecules to move back and forth between the cells. These channels allow messages to pass between cells, allowing them to communicate and coordinate functions, like helping cilia of adjacent cells move together. So just to recap what we've covered in this lesson, there are three types of cell junctions tight junctions which firmly adhere adjacent cells to one another to form an impenetrable barrier, desmosomes which further strengthen these tight junctions and make them resistant to stretching and twisting, and finally gap junctions which enable cells to communicate effectively with one another.